one, we are live. This is 2OF Entertainment. Hey, happy Friday. How you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm I'm Very trying good. to Wait, you sound like you're going to die. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying to smile but um it it's not that easy. This time yes. we we have a we have a topic that is uh horrible, terrible. We do. Frightening. And the top and the topic is I'm going to read what you sent me this morning. Um the topic yeah. today is that this the State Child Protection Agencies in Norway are out of control and the whole world is talking about it. And I don't think the whole world is talking about it because nobody knows. So you want to talk about it and you brought with you today a special guest and his name yeah. is, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. You can do that. Um, he's a guest <laughs> an advocate for the children and the parents. Yeah, it's uh, Mr. Fardal, uh, just uh, Rune Fardal from... Uh, okay. From Bergen, but he he speaks uh, uh, English now. Yes. That's good because I don't speak English, so it'd be nice to have him on. So yeah, all you right. Speak so should we bring him in? Yeah, please, please, please. All He's right. uh, well, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, all right. So, gentlemen, as they say in America, start your engines. Tell us what's going on with the uh, child protection er er agencies in Norway and the kids and the children and parents. What's what's going on over there? Because I don't think anybody in the United States has heard of this. Yeah. Do you want to talk more or shall I? Uh... Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, how, can I first ask you, how many years have you been helping uh, uh, parents with with this uh, crazy uh, attitude from uh, from the Norwegian state. Yeah, a uh, little bit about myself. I uh, worked with this for maybe some twenty four years or something. Uh, and um, in the beginning, I um, experienced many uh, families that uh, had problem with childcare. Uh, in Norway, the so-called Barneverne, and um, little by little, I start uh, to search for information, and uh, more and more people get aware of me. So I start to help people in the meeting with childcare, um, documents, writing documents for court, answering letter for for childcare, etc. Uh, and then um, it went on from there. So. Today I um, I can say I'm I'm pretty well known in Norway and uh, also in Scandinavia for for this work. Uh, I know I have helped a lot of uh, parents and children. Uh, I have examples uh, parents uh, calling me and telling me they are alive because of me the help I gave them, uh, and um, that's how I I work. So I have. Um, all, all through the years, uh, got a lot of knowledge about this system and the system. Come back to uh, out in the understanding. Of, um, this is uh, this is the basic for for this. Kind of had a bad connection, I think here. Yeah. Do you hear us? Maybe if you go out and come come back in again, Runa, you're frozen and we can't hear you. He's in a bad spot and has a bad connection. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I kind of do want to hear what he's doing, so we're going to kick him from the studio. Hopefully, he hears us and he comes back in. So, Morton, tell us what's yeah. going on since we. Yeah. Uh, since your well, guest just kind of went bye bye, so tell me what's going what, on in Norway. What, what is going on is that um, we had a lot of international eyes on us, 
the the well a half a year ago there's a movie that uh, from 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 uh, India that right. was made about this topic. Hmm. Oh, he's back. There yeah. you go. Hopefully, it should be better. There I was again. You you dropped out, but uh, I was I could see myself, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I um, I'm helping uh, children and and uh, parents and families uh, regarding. Okay. Uh, the, this uh, conversation with uh, with courts and childcare system in Norway, and um, th there is a lot to say. So we just have to see where this uh, goes. But that a uh, short uh, introduction, anyway. Hmm. So tell me what you're doing though for in Norway, because um, I'm reading your I'm reading your bio on Wikipedia. Okay, so it says mm -hmm. that you are a notorious rootful act activist against child welfare services in Norway. So mm -hmm. tell me what you're doing, and I guess what the Norwegian government is doing that you feel isn't right. Like what's going on in Norway um, that is like got your feathers up for the last 24 years, and like what are you doing to help the families? what's Norway doing that you think they shouldn't do? Like, so what's the premise of what's going on here? Well, uh, <clears throat> the, the child care system is set up to help uh, families uh, okay. to, if they have problems. But one thing is the theory and the other okay. is how they practice this uh, okay. work. And what we see is that um, Norway has been now convicted 25 plus times in uh, the Human Rights Court in Europe for violating human rights. And that's only childcare cases. Okay. Uh, that means they interpreting the law here in a way that is uh, against human rights. Mm. Uh, and that started for full for yeah some five six years ago uh several uh, serious convictions coming and they're still coming uh and th this all my experience uh, is that this is based on an arrogance uh, mm -hmm. both regarding to uh, the law and also a scientific way of working uh, the law is not so bad, but when you don't follow it and make your own laws, uh, that's when the problems start to come. And so, can you give us an example of how that what's how that's going in Norway, where someone's not actually following the law and they make their own? So, what like what's the law and what what are they make believing, if you will? Yeah, the, there is the law, and then there is the interpretation of the law. Okay, <laughs> and that's two different things for this this uh, barn around the child care right. services. Uh, and as you see, if you see the map of Norway, there's a lot of fjords in and out mm -hmm. all the way up the, along the coast. And every childcare in every city inside these fjords sort of make their own culture of how they do things. Okay. And uh, we, we have examples where uh, I ask them, don't you use the human rights here? Uh, no, we don't practice human rights here. Uh, when you get that <laughs> kind of answer, then you know that they, they have a problem. Uh, about so the so who doesn't and, practice human rights in Norway? Who said that to you? Uh, what do you say? You said that they said they don't practice human rights there. Who said yeah. that to you, that they don't practice uh, human rights in Norway? Childcare workers in several okay. communes in Norway uh, okay. give me that answer. Because they are, okay. they are not used to work on that level of uh, of the law, you know that's the right. top law in Norway, above the Norwegian uh, Grundlov. The um, I don't know the exact uh, conversation in Norway, but the, the highest law in Norway is the so-called Grundlov, and then okay. uh, then you have the International Human Rights uh, Convention above that. And the moment you start to talk in human rights convention, mm -hmm. they drop out because they they don't follow yeah. you. They they don't have the knowledge. And okay. I have been to Strasbourg where the human rights court is and followed several cases there. So I 
and well um, aware of uh, that law. And I'm often using that one when I ask, why don't you follow this law? Because that's the highest law. Uh, but they are not used to that. They're used to, no, we don't do it that way in our office. Uh, that's the answer you sometimes get. And that's where you sort of, what? <laughs> okay. What you're up against. So, R uh, Runa, um, I I've, I've, I've been in uh, some meetings with you uh, uh, regarding some families in my municipality and um, um, as a politician then I was uh, by by the mayor in in, 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 in the municipality I was uh, outed uh, a lot and the politicians are now uh, they don't know it, kind of. I think they know it, but they, they are afraid. They are afraid to touch uh, any cases in, in, in this one. But the, the new law uh, says that the, the, the municipality has a great responsibility, and that is uh, not taken care of in, in most of the communas. Mm. Uh, the 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 municipal municipalities yes yeah that's uh, that's right uh, the responsibility stay with the politician in the different communes uh, but I don't think they are aware of that so much hmm. um, they have administri oh. uh, administrative uh, bosses who they think mm -hmm. is responsible but <laughs> they are actually not responsible it's the uh, politicians that's responsible and they have sort of difficult to touch this subject because they know if they open this one it's like open the Pandora box uh, what's coming out uh, is not good because so much over so many years have been covered up in this system that when you start to open up um, it doesn't look so good for, for them. And they know they have the responsibility. So I think that's some of the problem here. And the uh, politicians have never really been put up to, uh, what shall we say, uh, be responsible for yep. what's going on in the different communes in Norway. When you guys talk about the human rights of a child, are you talking about the November 1989 Convention of Rights of the Child that was adopted and ratified by the UN? Or are you talking about the annual convention that comes out? Because this is in accordance with Article 49. So which one are you guys talking about? Uh, the Human Rights Convention. So the European Human Rights Convention human is, rights. An, is an annual, right? But wouldn't they have yeah. gotten the basic rights then from the one from the UN in 1989? Or no? Yeah, it's sort of, um, it's a sort of the same things. But okay. uh, the the Human Rights Court uh, and the convention there is, is more actively used uh, in Norway. Mm. Okay. So in, in Nor and Norway's ratified it and agreed to it. And so yeah. what you're saying is that the social workers in Norway that deal with child protection services don't know what the human rights of a child are. They're just dealing with the law of the land. And that's but where we, the we, problem comes in, because I, I think they know. <laughs> they have been uh, thought about this, especially after mm -hmm. this uh, Lobben, which is Norway case in the 2019. Uh, they have had lawyers teaching this and they have lawyers in working for them so they know this but the arrogance in many offices especially where there are um, problems is high and they don't they just don't care because nobody really hold them responsible for what they're doing but what are they doing i guess that's the question because morton said like this is or before the show was telling me like they do stuff so what are they doing what's the child service protection agency in norway doing that's like this travesty that um the world needs to be aware of well they they are put there to help families first of all help them if some family okay. have some problem 
they are there to help. But what we see the, the culture that have developed over years is that they are more eager to get in and take children out of the family okay. and then place it in foster home or institution and mm -hmm. then forget about the parents. And that is not okay. according to the law. That's what, are they doing the that law. because the child's being harmed or are they doing it just because why they take, first of all, why are they going to the house to take the child? That's the first thing. Like, why are they going to the house? Do we know? Is there statistics that we can say they go for the house for X percent of this and X percent of that? And out of this hundred children, so many are you reunited or out of every hundred children, no one's reunited ever with their parents? Well, well some year ago, the reason was uh, violence, uh, okay. sexual uh, harassment, okay. uh, narcotics, uh, psychiatry, right. things like that, serious stuff. Right. But today, uh, I think the majority of reasons is the so-called emotional um, parenthood. Which means that's, what? <laughs> that's a rather diffused thing. Because right. they so put anything What is it? What emotional parenthood mean? Because I have no idea what that means. That makes no sense. To me. uh, <laughs> You're American. Yeah, I know. Uh, nothing makes sense to me. That's a good one. Uh, it's sort of being able to see the child's needs. Okay. Uh, that uh, the that you have eye contact with the children. Yeah, especially uh, stuff like that, and okay. uh, that brings up many problems because how about blind parents it's not about the eyes it's uh, about the uh, the emotional expression of the parents if okay. the child have done something it looks up to the parent is it safe is it okay he look at the whole picture of the face is it anger from parents is it acceptance or, or what is it and that's the so-called eye contact. So right. it's not the eyes in itself, it's the, it's the whole face, what kind of emotion the adult is reflecting to the child. And mm. this can be anything. And when they come into a family and want to uh, see if this is good or bad, uh, they come in and look in a small window of time they come okay. two hours, take a look what's happening in that stressed environment. And then they judge the parents from that. Yeah. And that seldom end up good because just the setting, two people from childcare coming, sitting there looking at you for two hours. Right. And they are not looking to see that you have some good sides. They're looking for yeah. mistakes all the time. And that so how do they get invited? But so how do they show up? Like if if I live in Norway and have children, how do they show up to my house? Like all of a sudden they're here to hang out for two hours. Like so, did someone call them? Does the school call them? A neighbor? How do they yeah. get there? I mean, because just to um, show up through the house, that's you know that that's think like nineteen thirty two. I get to kick in your door and do whatever I want to do. So how do they show up to the house in Norway? Yeah, it's a sort of that way, but it starts with a message of worry from school or some health okay. Uh, worker. Okay. Uh, that can be based on just anything. Right. Uh, Rumors or the whatever. Child, if the child is uh, exposed to uh, mobbing in the school, What's mobbing? Uh, the school don't uh, clear. Uh, bullying? Bu bu bullying. Bullying. Okay, bullying. Yeah, bullying, okay. bullying okay. in school. Yeah, yeah. Um, then the the school don't clear up. It's actually the school's responsibility to fix that according to Norwegian law. The environment okay. in school is responsibility of the school. Okay. But um, that demands knowledge and resources. Okay. So they just send a message of worry to the childcare and kick right. the problem over there. And that's where everything starts to escalate because okay. the, the school's responsibility is suddenly parents in capability of taking care of the children. Okay. <laughs> Everything is turned on the head sort of. Yeah. And then the uh, ch parents are told to come to the childcare normally to look at that uh, message of worry. 
And then uh, they got the plan for how the childcare is going to work. Right. And that's the same plan for everybody, okay. <laughs> which yeah. in itself is a problem. Um, because some some worries are, uh, all the worries are actually different. But you have one frame to put over every family. They go through, they talk to the parents. They try to split the parents. So they talk to one father, one mother. Uh, probably to put them up against each other. So I, I tell I parents both together. I don't know together. about that. I think they try to. Yeah. I think they try to get each side of the story. I don't think they're trying to put them yeah. up against each other. That's that's a little mm. conspiratorial. Unless that's how you you've think, heard that. Yeah, you think rational now, but I always think what rational. we see, what we <laughs> see is something else in in okay. some some cases. So they they give they take part. Um, uh, for example, they stay with the mother's version of a story right. and against the father. They can kick the father out of the home while they are yeah. investigating. There are so many different happenings here. But right. uh, the, the main line, they talk to the parents. Uh, they talk to the children if they're old enough. Uh, right. They get information from school, uh, healthcare, police, uh, social services, uh, all the things they can think of. They get right. information. And okay. um, the law say that uh, what they're going to look at is today's situation. But I have cases where they go back 24 years when the mother is six years old and have problem in her school. And they mm -hmm. use that kind of information in the case. And that's obviously not uh, a good thing to do because what happened 24 years ago had nothing to do with today's situation. Oh, so they go back. So they go back and look at the parents' history, if you will. And if they don't, yeah. and if they had a problem in school, they bring that up and say, "Because you had a problem in school, you can't you do something with your child." Yeah. But but Rune, yeah. you you have you have a, yeah. you have a wonderful uh, picture of this because you have told me and and others as well that it's mm -hmm. like a road and if you're in the in the left uh, shoulder of, of of the road then they are taking the children too early if you're in the main road uh, things are okay uh, normally. Uh, so, so the the child care are are okay for for some, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But then again, the worst thing, if you come too late, or if you take a girl or a boy, or or or, or split the family, and send them normally uh, all over Norway, and Norway is uh, very very big, we, it ends up with death with with the the uh, the kids are are, are killing it uh, it's committing suicides and uh, we have yeah. a lot of cases on, on on that as well so it's um it's horrible and the politicians are doing nada i tried uh, you 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 know the case because you were involved yeah. and um but but they 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 don't want to they are looking away you know how how many doesn't you know who 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 has uh, committed suicide well um up to 2009 um they produced the statistics for that yeah and that was yeah. going up uh, uh, it was about 136 children died in the child care, uh, care, <laughs> care. Is that a, is that a uh, year when or is I that over that out, Yeah. In one year. Is that a year? Per year. Uh, uh, one year. Yeah. One year, 136 one children year. passed away. Uh, okay. The curve was going up. And right. when I put that out on the internet, right, right. they start showing it. They stop. No, I mean, they stop showing it. Okay. Yeah. But if we should fall on the curve and it was rising like it did when they stopped giving this information out, we should be some about 160, 180 children a year. Okay. And what do they die? Uh, die of? What do they care. die? What are they when they're in child protection in Norway? What are they dying of? Uh, suicide, violent okay. deaths, narcotics, okay. stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. 
So basically, then, and, according to you, uh, then they would be no better there than when they're with their parents. No, actually, they are much worse out than worse. Uh, if they, even mm. if they stay in a dysfunctional family. Right, right. So how many children a year then do the child services of Norway take from parents and put them in their service or in their protection, so to speak? Well, they get about 50,000 messages of worries. And uh, I think at the, at the moment they have about some 10,000 plus children placed okay. in foster homes, institutions okay. uh, uh, at the time. Yeah. And so once they're placed at a foster home or institution, they never go back to their parents because whether there's violence or drugs or whatever it might be, they never get to go back because they state, mm -hmm. the state, for lack of a better term, feels that they're not safe there. Yeah, they, they say so. But the law say and the human rights say that they shall work for bring the children back again. So help the right. parents who need it and bring the children and family together. But right. there is another element here, and that's money. <laughs> yeah. Because foster parents, they make about uh, at least five, six hundred thousand Norwegian per year, per child. 60, 50, 60,000 US yeah. okay. dollars. Per year, per child. And some foster parents have four or five children. <laughs> So wow. you see, that's a that's this a is, whole that's a whole business. This is yeah. a whole business. So um, the childcare system also make money on this because they get a certain amount from the government. Okay. Uh, some go to foster parents, but they keep the rest, and okay. the foster parents pay tax. <laughs> so that okay. money also come into the community. And this is some of the problem. There, there is no real control in the system. Um, there is, we, ha we have a court system in Norway, but right. my experience and many others show that the court system is actually backing up this system. It's an alibi for the system. There is no real judges who really go oh. in and look at the case according okay. to the law. Hmm. So, well, so that there's makes a whole big article which I'm which I'm kind of reading while you're talking, so I can hmm. get up on the subject that we we're discussing. But according yeah. to this, it's kind of what you're saying. The Norwegian Child Protection Services, commonly known as whatever, has been embroiled in controversy over a decade due to hmm. its practice yeah. of removing children from their parents. Yeah. So um, that's kind of that's but, kind of crazy, Stephen. And, 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 and Runa, uh, the, there is also another thing, because a lot of uh, people who's been, uh, who earlier was hired in, in, in the child protection, there's also money for them, because they are starting up their own business as an sure. uh, advisor or consultant, you know, for the child system. And they... I've been looking at, uh, well, Rune knows this much better, how, how, how much, uh, you know, they they are out with, with when, when, when the children are meeting the parents when the system allows it, not, uh, it's not no. only one way, it's, it, well, it's only one way. Um, and um, I've seen some figures there that is, uh, crazy that they're earning way too much money and and the law listen to them because they are taken in as um, as um, um, specialists experts, mm, yeah. experts. Mm. Can, can can you can you talk a bit about that Rune? because that's it, money yeah, money uh, well before you before you start talking about that there's a film that just came out last year about this issue about an Indian lady um, and yeah. they're saying that you know all these parents try to battle the child protection agency in Norway and they don't win so basically your child protection agency in Norway is more of a it's almost like um, uh, it's a Hans Christian Andersen novel now all of a sudden you know like a tiny <laughs> Tim it's, it's like 
you know, it's like we're going to take the kids. I don't know if they do cheap labor and make sneakers. Um, maybe they do. Um, but my point is, no, it seems no. like for all for all the rhetoric, there's a lot of truth behind it, and no one's really talking about it. Great, they made a, an Indian filmmaker made a film. You guys are talking yeah. about it. There's some blurbs on the internet, but no one's really talking about them. The Child Protection Agency in Norway is now a business more than it is helping children. Yeah. It's uh, the film. Is it Chatterjee was uh, was on the movie here last year, that right. the Indian film you talk about, yeah. and that that show the cynical part of this uh, industry, uh, right. because um, and and I I meet childcare workers and childcare bosses uh, all over Norway, and and I have gone into cases and and show that. What they're doing is so against the law that I have right. made some uh, some um, cities childcare where everybody was fired, everybody. Okay. Uh, and they have problem getting new people in. And I have gone into other cases where um, where I document that case workers are trying to make the children say something, so right. they don't have to go back to the parents, but. I got it on tape, and so how that do you person get involved was kicked with these out. It. Right? How do you get involved with these cases, though? Like, if I'm a, if if someone's in Norway and Child Protection Services shows up at their door for whatever reason, how do they know? You know, who you're going to call? Ghostbusters? How do they know to call you or the lady that just walked by you? Either one of you. Um, <laughs> yeah. But how do they? Yeah, how I, do they know who to call? Good, good name. I, I am a sort of Ghostbuster. Go in and clean up the mess. Okay, but because, how do they know to call uh, maybe, you? Though? Like, how, how do you get involved with a case? Um, By word of mouth, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. I think very many people in Norway know me because, uh, thanks to the biggest newspaper in Norway, they have right, made right. Uh, good ad advertising for me, <laughs> okay. by criticizing me. Yeah. So yeah, I know, I've, been reading your, I've been reading all your criticism as well on the internet. So yeah, because they, yeah. they have unfavorable that, things to say about you. So yeah, the the system don't like what I say because I threaten right. the money and the power. Yeah. And yeah. these uh, unions that stay behind the childcare workers, that's okay. the people who uh, brought the newspaper reading up. Right. Uh, but that's. Um, Maybe somebody who isn't me, to put it that way, would have killed themselves because of that. We have seen examples where newspapers go after one person and they shoot themselves. But right, right. I have studied psychology for over 20 years. Uh, I have yeah. written book about psychopaths, so I know little about the crazy way of <laughs> psychology, how that works. So I turn this around and use it against them okay. because the these people who criticize me, they they don't talk about the work I do. They talk right. about me as a person. So yeah, ad hominem yeah, yeah. argumentation. Right. They attack me and they right. show me they have no argument. They want to take the man, not the ball. Right. And that's actually a, a lot of people understand that. And I, I feel I get very much support from families, everybody in Norway and Sweden, uh, Poland, okay. Denmark, they, they call me. Okay. Uh, and a lot of uh, people working in the system too agree with me. Okay. Because when I go into a case, I don't go in to attack the person in childcare. Right. I go in to ask the difficult question, what is the basis for your claims? Right. And when they say, well, we think so, and we feel like that. And then I ask, uh, what's the scientific basis of your worry? And right. they cannot answer. And, and sometimes I go in and ask, uh, why don't you follow the human right convention? Right. Now, we just follow the Norwegian child care law. Yeah, that's okay. okay, but the convention is above that law. It's lex superior. Right. right. And that's where the conversation gets difficult for them because I probably know more than many of these caseworkers do. 
And then they start calling for the boss in the childcare to join the meeting and stuff like that. And right. sometimes they get serious problem because I argue from uh, law and science. Right. While they try to attack me. So I can ex uh, tell you that um, I have been, after several of these meetings, they report me to the police. Okay. Because yeah. they say I'm scary. <laughs> so I think I now have 59 child cares reported me to police and every one of them has been cancelled by the police. They just okay. end it. You see, there is no break of any law. But right. it's a sort of frustration in the child care system. Uh, so how do you I'm, get paid when you, when you take a case? If, if someone calls you, do you get paid to take the case or you just come in as a good Samaritan? So how does that work? It's a sort of mix because as Morten say, Norway, Norway is a long country. It's uh, if you turn from Oslo north, if you turn that south, you come Italy, Rome. So right. through the whole yeah. Europe. So it's a very long yeah. country. So there are travels. I have to f use plane to travel. Right. Uh, and normally the people I help, they um, pay for travel okay. and uh, expenses co concerning that most of the time. Yeah. Right. And then if so, out of the cases that you helped, do you have a and I, it's I'm American, so everything's either a win or a loss. How many have you won, I guess, where the children get to stay with their parents and the children are thriving and doing well? And then how many, I guess, have you lost where? They didn't care that you produced evidence and they were just like too bad the kids going to go to child services well win and lost is a little too concrete term uh, i know that yeah. i have cancelled a lot of cases they just uh, okay. stopped going after the children or parents uh, i know i have brought a lot of children back home okay uh, some cases special where i meet people who have a problem with um, communication, uh, child care worker who uh, they go into a sort of defense system. Uh, yeah. They don't want to listen. Uh, they don't want to talk. And then I bring this up on another level because I have a camera and right. I make a lot of videos. And when they, when they are, they, it's a sort of childish behavior, I think, right. from these people. They they should, they they sit there as the professional, but they have a really big problem communicating with somebody who know a little more than they do, okay. uh, because they know they're going to lose. Right. Sometimes, but why? What? Yeah. Why, Rune, don't you think other countries have the same um, problems? Uh, it, it's typical Norwegian, this one, because I, I know a lot of people from uh, uh, the earlier, what we called East, Eastern Europe. They are just, um, there are many families that are running, running away from Norway. Mm. They have to. Some some Norwegian families run to Poland, uh, some to Spain, okay. some to uh, Dubai. <laughs> uh, I have been all these places talking with them, uh, making interview with them uh, to bring this case out in the open. And the worst thing childcare want is to be exposed for what they are doing in yeah. this uh, separate cases. That is the Achilles of this right. of this system, and that's what they don't like. So, but I, I don't go in with that first. I go in to have a dialogue, and I'm very I'm moving through solving the problem because sometimes some parents need some help. Uh, there can right. be, for example, uh, some parents, young parents. I helped some year ago. Uh, the father he was using some uh, some um, hashes some narcotics right, right. Uh, and we find out that okay that's not good for when you have the children so we make an agreement you he take a blood test and urine test 
to check that he doesn't have this in the system for three months and if mm -hmm. that is clear okay then case closed and the uh, child care agreed so that was the plan there it, it was a solution to a problem yeah. uh, right. and sometime um, the claims in the worries against the parents come from a neighbor that don't like right. them it's yeah. false claims Okay. But they start Correct. the whole process, the whole process, the whole system start anyway. Um, and that's sometime make it difficult because um, the caseworker have a problem to narrow in what is actually the problem. Okay. They have a framework. That's how we do things here and put this over the family and make a small thing very big. Okay. And we know that uh, this is a very stressful uh, situation for a family and for children, knowing that the child is here and uh, oh, they're trying to take the children or what are they doing? There, there is no, they have no, uh, what shall we say, yeah. they, they get too little feedback of right. what they are uh, going into. Yeah. Uh, I had a case last year, for example, where the worry from the school was that this uh, young boy uh, used a sexualized language. Okay. Which what does that mean in English? In what does it mean when you use sexual? Language. What does that mean in English, though? Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck That's you, what he said to and get lost, things like that. They, they try well, to be tough. Do, but to be fair, if you do meet a hooker, you usually do say fuck you. I mean, so uh, he's <laughs> yeah. uh, using it properly. I'm just saying. Yeah. So, okay. but, so he was using he was using he was using adult language in school. And so yeah. how did the case go? Yeah. And that um, uh, that was very special because there was a gang of nine boys and they all used okay. that language. But only right. only one got the worry home. OK. And when they got the worry, they went to the childcare where they talk about the worry. Right. And then that was 13 June last year. Okay. And then he was sick, 14. The childcare okay. was home looking at him. 15, the childcare should come, but they didn't come. 16, mm -hmm. he come back to school and the school say, oh, that language is gone. And that should be the end of the case. But now the worry is, how did that language disappear without childcare going in helping? Right. And they it's never impossible. thought of the fact that the mother and the child got the worry and they took it serious and he stopped using the language. That's very That's easy right. to understand. Right. Because another okay. thing, and uh, yeah, another let, thing let we have, we, because yeah, this, this yeah, is okay, serious. Uh, then the summer comes, he come back to right. school in August and the school say, oh, the language is gone. And they worry, right. hmm, how is that happening? <laughs> then they brought up a new worry. Oh, it must be the mother who uh, uh, exposed him to violence or sexual assault. Right, right. They fantasize about. So it, it went on to December. Then mm -hmm. they take the boy acute out of home, placed in on secret uh, institution where nobody right. know who he, where he was. And that was when the mother contacted me. Gotcha. And I looked at the paper and I said, why did I take him? The case should be finished long time ago. We have the proof here. They even in they even say themselves the problem is gone. Right. So. Uh, uh, and then she have a lawyer, but the lawyer say, ah, oh, it's impossible to to appeal these acute cases. We just wait until we go to into the system after Christmas. Right. But I say, no, we go after them now because this is not according to the law. So right. I wrote a, six, a 12 page appeal and two days later he was home. OK, but they didn't want to give up, so they took the case to the so-called Fylkesnemd, it's a lower okay. uh, court institution before the real court, yeah. okay. uh, 
and wanted to take the child into custody. <laughs> oh, wow. But uh, the documentation I put up and a new lawyer that we brought, we brought in made it so they win. And then a few gotcha. weeks later, the child can say, OK, we give up. We are not going to appeal to another court. Finish. So the boy, after coming back just before Christmas last year, have stayed in the family. They are happy, but they move out of that commune. Okay. Because we found we found so many bad things about the school, about right. how the caseworker was working. You, you know, the school who reported that boy to childcare, they told the children, and remember, this is 10, 12 year old children. Right. They told them, bring a child underwear to school, uh, a used one. We can dig it down in the ground and see how fast it terminates in the soil. So after a couple of months, they dig it up again. What's that children's have to do with anything? Underwear. But why? You but know? Yeah, I understand that. So why why do they need children's underwear? Yeah, that's something we ask ourselves too because gotcha. we see the, the there is a system in this. Uh, these people who should come in and help the parents, so-called, right. guidance, they were extremely sexualized, focused. Gotcha. The mother must have raped the son to stop right, right, him right. from talking. They, they started <sighs> that crazy thinking. And that's where you see some of the problem in this system. There are caseworkers who lack serious knowledge about how to do uh, do the work this right. is have nothing to do with science you know this is made up of people's own ego they, right. they have oh i like to have children you know right, right. it's turning over to a pedophile sort of acting uh, and when i start i made three films in front of the um uh, road who's the the town hall in this yeah, city right. uh, and i think that made an impression on that because nobody in that uh, administration liked to be exposed for what the childcare was doing in that city. Right. And that's where I bring in the camera. I talk live. Uh, I tell people what's happening based on their scientific work, <laughs> so-called, oh. and what law they break. And a lot of people follow this. I have almost 30,000 followers now in Facebook and YouTube, uh, TikTok, everywhere. Right. And, and this spread out very much. And okay. of course, when I go in and make for, for the childcare, this is a problem. And right. that's where yeah. you see they use the newspaper to sort of uh, make me look bad. Gotcha. Job issue, yeah, yeah. I, I so turn like this around. Cases, I use it as so a good commercial right, right. <laughs> because people how know many cases how this you win. Like, how many cases what? a year do you take? How many cases a year do you take? And then, how many do you, if you will, win where the child gets to stay with the parent? Uh, I don't have statistics in front of me, but I think I'm involved in some yeah, 30, 40 cases every year. Okay. And, and out of that, I, how much do you, do you, do you have a lot of, do you win like 50%, 80%? What's like, how do you, um, winning is where the kid stays with the parents, of course. Yeah. That's a majority. Okay. Yeah. Some, uh, is, uh, that, that's why I react to this win or lose because right. yeah. I never stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I never stop the cases that isn't finished. I go on. I go after these people. Right. Either they oh, are so, out of their so, work or we win. So if, the child, if the child ends up in child care, you still fight to get the child to come home. Yeah. Gotcha. Absolutely. Okay. The, the, there is the one thing. The, the, there is one thing uh, viewers have to, have to get to know, and that is when the child care comes home to the family. Very very often they have the cops with them. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. all the neighborhood, 
everything you know they see a caps and often two two cars maybe right you know just to show kind of sh sh so and nobody even the police has uh, committees that can look down and see what they are doing you know revising papers go in without further notice to to um, to read uh, papers and w what they're doing right. in child care system no one can and one more thing i have to say and that is uh, that is crazy because uh, young students who, who are uh, or, or you, you know that they, they are graduating and right. they are going to work such a place they very often know more about the laws about, about uh, 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 you know uh, right. younger brains but then they have it's a leader problem like everywhere else in in my opinion because the leader on top is either not in communication with she he or she doesn't know what's going on uh, under her or don't care or are together with them you know it, it but but it's it's um but isn't your leader a king the young people yeah we have a leader as a king uh, so but, shouldn't but he the, be shouldn't he be like looking into this his whatever but, his people but 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 i just have to emphasize that the young people who are starting are very 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 often quitting okay they're quitting they're fine they find another uh, occupation because they can't work there if they are telling an older uh, a, a, a employee that this is not what we learned at at um, uh, the university or, 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 right. or you know uh, that well this is the way we do it here gotcha interesting all right well this was fascinating gentlemen thank you so much thank you for being a guest I, I appreciate it so Hopefully, after people see this, they'll take some action, and um, we'll go from there. Hopefully, and if you want to come back and give us some updates, that'd be pretty cool. I think to hear uh, to what's going on uh, with the child care service in Norway, and if someone from child care service in Norway wants to come on and have a debate, I'd love for that to that would ah. be fun too. I know they won't. Um, Listen, I have to invite them because you know if they don't, then politicians, they politicians, yeah. politicians are able to stop this. Really, okay, well, they are the think. worst. They are cowards. Okay, well, okay, it makes about that's right. So, so the Norway uh, politicians maybe, are, are, are go ahead. Runa. Yeah, a little advice to tourists coming into Norway. Remember, yeah. childcare can also take your children in Norway. They don't care. <laughs> we have seen that. Oh, that's so, cool. Because I, that's I don't even have wish. kids, but there's some kids I know that I'm taking to Norway. Norton, I'll be there next week. So, and okay, I'll go okay, okay. care where I'm going to be. It'll be good. They can take the kids. So, it'll be good. Clean them up. <laughs> I'm happy oh, we, so, we, 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 we have to. Don't have. <laughs> so. But this is damn serious. You know, all yeah. the people who are killing themselves, who are, you know, they can't talk with mom and dad uh, right. on, on, on the phone. Nothing. You know, it's this is fucking not good. Yeah. Sorry, no, my language. You. That's okay. We've said worse on these shows. I think yeah. um, hopefully someone watching this will do something, whether they do a bigger story on it, whether I'm surprised that the UN or the Humanity, whatever council hasn't reached out to you and brought this to the attention of the world. So it would seem to me that, that would, I would go to the UN and go, hey, they're not complying with the 1989 Act. I would go to your Humanity Council and be like, you're not complying with the Act of last year. I would, that's where I would start, but what do I know? But that's, it seems to me if they're not complying, whether it's a government like a Norway or not, you, someone needs to tell them. And really, just the guy made a movie. I don't think anybody watched it. I mean, maybe in Norway they did, but probably no one else. So I think it has to do with a lot of, you got to get out there and, and talk about it. So um, I, think I think it's on not. I think the, the movie is on Netflix in several maybe, countries. Maybe, yeah, probably in Norway and Switzerland or Sweden and no, Poland. No, yeah, here. I I, I, I saw here. it down. I saw it in Spain. Okay, they, well, they they, they have it there. 
All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we'll we'll put the link to the movie as well, so we'll see. So, Rule, thank but you so I, much, Morton. It's always good to see you. Yes. Rune, Rune uh, m- 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 Mr. Fardal down here, he has yeah. gotten so so much shit that... Uh, but but we we need people who is not quitters, right. and we need people who are who have hearts yeah. and brains. Yeah. So yeah. kudos to uh, to you, Rune. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, you did great. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It's a pleasure. Don't forget to subscribe and like. You can catch us on wherever you get your podcast or here on YouTube for podcasting. Go to Two Old Parts Making Noises. Look for the Ad Hoc Show, and you can catch this here, or you can look at our pretty faces here on YouTube every Friday morning. We'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Cheers, boys. Have a good day.